and uh, hope everyone had a great day yesterday. Graduations and everybody was safe and a lot of good parties in Milford. First item is the uh, there's the warrant, Brian. Uh, moved. Oh, I'll second. By Brian, second by Bill. Any discussion? All in favor? Oppose? The approval of uh, May 12th meetings. Motion. Motion by uh, second. Brian, seconded by Bill. All in favor? Opposed? Unanimous. Uh, invitation to speak. Anyone in the audience who would like to uh, address the board? Okay. We'll go to scheduled uh, appointments. We have Mr. Frazier in front of us uh, representing National Grid. This is a public hearing, petition poll 784, Veterans of Memorial Drive. Plan number 1582 5182, Massachusetts Electric Company, Verizon, New England. Description Veterans Memorial Drive. The town of Milford has requested the relocation of Guy Pole 784 Veterans Memorial Drive, approximately 10 feet north, to accommodate future bike path. Also, for permission to lay and maintain underground laterals, cables, and wires in the above or intersecting public ways for the purpose of making connections with such poles and buildings as each of said petitioners may desire for distributing purposes and the meetings taking place in this room at this time. So with that, uh, Mr. Frazier, if you could just talk a little bit about this, add something to it that I've missed or whatever. Uh, you pretty much said it all, but relocating the, the guide poles 7-84, 10 feet north to accommodate a future bike path for the request of the town of Milford. Okay. Brian, any questions? I, I don't have any questions on this one, Mr. Okay. Chairman. Bill. No questions. Anyone in the audience, any questions? Okay. If not, uh, motion to accept. I move. Motion by uh, Bill, seconded by Brian. All in favor? And that's unanimous. Next is uh, the next one. Do you have it, Mike, in front of you? I don't, but I know it. All right. I'll read it and I'll give it to you, okay? This is uh, plan number 16822927, uh, Purchase Street, National Grid Request, location of relocation of existing pole 53, 10 feet north, and installing a new anchor per the request of the customer at 138 Purchase Street to allow for removal of a tree guy wire. Also for permission to lay and maintain underground laterals, cables, and wires in the above are intersecting public ways for the purpose of making connections with such poles and buildings as each of said petitioners may desire for distributing purposes. And it's scheduled for this room at this time. So that request is, is on behalf of the uh, petitioner. Correct. Uh, House 138. Um, customer currently has a uh, Verizon guy wire going to a tree that they wish to remove. They wish to remove the tree. Um, because it's dying. And so in order for us to properly put an anchor in the ground, we have to move it up 10 feet north because or else the anchor would go into the driveway. So just relocating the pole 10 feet, 10 feet north and then installing an anchor. So Verizon can remove the, the guy wire going to the tree. Okay. Brian? No, no questions. Bill? I don't have any questions. I, I'm certain it's not really in the middle of Purchase Street, but uh, from the drawing, but uh, or in in the roadway. But no, yeah, it just shows that it's public way, not on private property. I understand. Okay, um, no questions at Anyone all. Anyone in the Chairman. audience? Motion. I'll move. Motion I'll second. by Brian. Seconded by Bill. <coughs> any discussion? If not, all in favor? Oppose? Unanimous. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Okay, 705, look at that, 706. Okay, next is the uh, annual meeting with the, the Portuguese. Uh, officials, Anna Perez, all the boys, come on up, Anna. Oh, yeah. Chief, this is something that I think everyone has become accustomed to for many, many years, the annual Portuguese picnic. It's a, it's a great uh, uh, traditional festive uh, occasion, holiday, uh, when we begin on Saturday. And then Sunday is the annual parade, and the chief has been tremendously involved over the years just to make sure that I know the, uh, the members work very hard to work along with the police chief to make sure that there's order and everything's being done right. There's a, you know, we, all, we all know that a lot of people come from out of town, kids, people probably under 21 years old. So the chief has developed a, a system where they have to wear uh, wristbands and there's a 
many, many officers working along with the members of the club. And it's a, like I said, it's tradition. It's been going on for, for a long time and we want it to go on for another 50 years. So with that, I'd just like to read some information. First thing would be uh, all alcoholic beverages. Saturday, July 19th, that would be from 12 noon to 1 a.m. And then on Sunday, the 20th, that would be from 12 p.m. to um, 11 p.m. And also the music will be, uh, will stop at 12.15 on Friday, on Saturday night, no, on Saturday night, but then on Sunday it uh, will stop at 10.45. Next is the live entertainment, um, Saturday, July 19th, Sunday, July 20th, and this from 8 p.m. to 12.15, and then on Sunday, 7 p.m. to 10.45. The last, last item is the parade permit, which will be on July 20th. And it's so nice to see all the, uh, the little kids in, in costume marching from uh, Sacred Heart Church all the way up. And it's usually brutally warm, so I feel bad for those little kids. Um, also, the chief has, uh, like I said, stipulations. And this is, uh, and he'll get into that in a few minutes. Portuguese picnic 2014, July 19th and the 20th. This is something that uh, he's worked out with the with the club. He'll talk about the 13 stipulations, the uh, the officers on each shift, and uh, it's it's controlled uh, pretty well. And like I said, everybody works hard to make sure that it's a success. So with that, I'd like to turn it over to uh, the chief, Anna. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, members of the board. Uh, as you indicated, uh, the Portuguese picnic will be held uh, Saturday, July 19th, and Sunday, July 20th. Uh, the police coverage uh, during the day, we have one officer uh, at the club uh, on Saturday from 2 p.m. to 6 p.m., on Sunday from 12 noon to 4 p.m. Uh, during the evening, uh, there are two police supervisors, 10 police officers from 6 p.m. to 2 a.m. on Saturday and 4 p.m. to midnight on Sunday. Uh, I also attend and, and work. Uh, I'm there uh, from open to close and working with uh, not only my staff, but with the uh, staff from the club, as well as uh, the troopers that are assigned to Milford uh, for that weekend by the Massachusetts State Police. Uh, our focus uh, on the neighborhoods between West and Water Streets, uh, from Maine to Congress Street, up through one, Route 140, uh, we pay particular emphasis of attention on uh, the parking areas along Route 140, so uh, Garden Pizza, Shaw's, across the street at the bank, uh, where people tend to park and uh, might congregate and, and we just don't want them tailgating as such uh, in those areas. Um, Chief, did the state police still come out? Yes, I, I, uh, I'll touch that to okay. my next one. Uh, we do uh, late evening, we will hold over our own officers so that we have a, su a sufficient number uh, in the neighborhoods and on the street to address any concerns throughout the town. Uh, so we generally hold over for an hour or two uh, the officers from the 4 to midnight shift. Uh, the Massachusetts State Police uh, for a number of years now have provided us with one supervisor and four troopers and their focus is along Water Street, West Street and up along Route 140 uh, to assist us in, in moving through those shopping areas to make sure that uh, in the neighborhoods as well, you know, Lee Street, Lawrence Street to make sure that things are peaceful and uh, people aren't being disruptive to the uh, residents of, of those neighborhoods. Yep. Um, the event area itself, as the permit indicates and has for many years, uh, there are two beer wagons uh, provided by uh, Budweiser that are put out into the uh, area where the event has taken place. They are fenced off and sectioned off so that people have to come up and produce or show that they have uh, the band, that they're 21 years of age. Um, we relocate the handicap parking so that it's right up front. Uh, to ensure that people uh, that have the need to utilize those spaces are able to do so and, and are, arrive right at the event itself. Uh, we set aside some parking uh, for police vehicles as well. As I indicated, the wristbands were now done for so many years, I kind of forget what the first year we did it. It's probably five, six years now. Mm -hmm. um, but we check IDs, and from there the person gets a wristband. It's helpful to us as you're moving through a crowd of several thousands of people uh, in identifying someone that has a drink in their hands if they don't have a wristband 
it, it causes the police officers and myself to check, make sure that they're of age, and then to have them get a wristband. Um, likewise, you're able to take a good look. The wristbands, if you break it off, it breaks in such a way that it's difficult to put it back together where it looks seamless. Uh, so I, I pick them out of the crowd really easily. <laughs> And, you know, you end up latching on to uh, some people that aren't of age and you, you deal with their families uh, by telephone and mom and dad have to come down and uh, take them home. We don't let them head home with, you know, older sister, older brother. doesn't work that way. So we involve parents and let the parents address uh, those particular concerns with those young people. Uh, there is a limit on the number of drinks a person can buy. You can buy two drinks, so very much like going to, you know, Fenway Park or uh, down to Foxborough. Uh, they limit the number of drinks that you can walk away with in your hand so that you're not redirecting them elsewhere. Uh, and we watch for that as well. Uh, with regard to the music, uh, as you know, a number of years ago, they built the concrete um, stage area down in the back lot and, and positioned it such that it is angled towards the club. Uh, we know that the sound travels. Uh, there are different times during the evening at different hours that, you know, I'll just go for a ride and I'll, I'll go down to, you know, Congress Street and head up towards Town Park to see how much of that is carrying. And uh, if the volume is such that I think it's disruptive, I go back, I work closely with uh, Joe Gonsalves and we'll go up to, the you know, the person controlling the volume and have him bring it down. Um, it was only one occasion that I remember one year where we actually had them stop early because they weren't that band wasn't getting the message. Um, as you indicated, Mr. Chairman, music uh, on, on Saturday will cease at uh, 12:15 uh, a.m. on Sunday at 10:45 p.m. And then, uh, lastly, the parade commences uh, from Sacred Heart Church along Main Street to Water Street to Prospect Heights, where. Uh, they go to the monument uh, there at the Heights and pay respect to uh, the people who live in that neighborhood and who came from that neighborhood. And then from there they move on down to the uh, Portuguese club where uh, traditional dancing and music takes place uh, involving uh, the young, young and old. Uh, sure. You know, so people that have experience as well as some uh, very basically toddlers. Uh, and it's really uh, fun to see. So uh, we're praying for good weather and our expectation is that it'll be uh, a good time once again. Uh, but we're prepared. I, I've met with the uh, club officers. Uh, we meet immediately after last year's picnic just to right. go over, you know, where there may have been issues, <clears throat> how we can do things differently. And then from there, as the year progresses and plans are being made, uh, we get together. I think it was another three times that I actually met with uh, club officers to go over things to make sure that we're on the sure. same page. And we are. So uh, we're looking forward to a good event, and uh, we think that we have the right measures in place. Yeah. And I'm sorry, can you introduce these handsome gentlemen here? Can you recognize these people? Can you right. say who they are? Um, I'd like to introduce Bento Alves. He's a vice president. Okay. And of course, um, Jose Gonzalez, he's the yeah. president. Okay. And this gentleman? And this is uh, Vic Victorino yeah. da Silva. Okay. He's also an officer of the committee. Okay. And also one of the mayors, Edward Bertarelli, is also in attendance. So I think everyone works together uh, during the weekend. Probably have about, what, 15,000, 20,000 people? Well, Saturday, nice weather. You'll see from beginning to end about 10,000 mm. in and out. Um, at times, a sizable crowd. It, it, it can prove to be interesting just moving through. You know, sure. It's just a, a lot of people, um, a lot of food. You know, you can't beat the food, so. Um, can't beef from cabbage, right? I wouldn't eat it if I was hungry. Um, never have, never will. But, but I, I will have the beef stew and, and Charisse and uh, other things. So, you no, know, really good food. And, um, you know, people come there for dinner, enjoy themselves, and then the music afterward. Um, I, and the band still comes from New Bedford? Yes, one is actually from East Providence, but on oh, Sunday okay. we're actually having um, a much uh, bro um, more international oh, band okay. from yeah. Canada. Oh, nice. So actually on Sunday it's uh, one step up. Yeah. Well, hopefully it'll be a nice one. <laughs> hopefully. Not too warm either. Not too warm. 
Well, Dad, we'll turn it over. No, no thunder showers. That's right, Brian. Right. right. Yeah. No, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Well, we've had Memorial Day, we've had graduation, and now yeah. this is the third sign that uh, summer is upon us. Uh, it's time for the Portuguese picnic. So, um, you know, you've obviously been doing this for years, and uh, you've got the process and the procedure down. So, good luck and wish you success uh, again this year. Bill. Um, now it's always a it's always a great event, and as uh, the chairman alluded to, the the, the children, the dance, uh, traditional uh, dress, is uh, always uh, something that's uh, great to see. Uh, the Portuguese culture, uh, you know, um, celebrate. So uh, it's always a, a good event, and uh, I think Chief, you touched upon um, probably the thing that I've heard over the years. Uh, is gradually decreasing the volume as it gets later so that uh, you know as it gets quieter and traffic calms down it, it carries further and I appreciate uh, everybody working with us on that because uh, frankly that's the only issue I've uh, ever heard from anybody and I think it's worked well um, I don't have any particular concerns and uh, I appreciate the fact that that you folks work so hard to continue doing this. I know it's a lot of the same people every year. Hopefully more people will step up and take some of the load off for future years. I know you're looking for that, uh, but good luck. Thank you. Thank you. One of the things that I always get a kick out of is the uh, the float on Sunday, the parade, all the mayors on the float. And it's, it's uh, disheartening sometimes when a lot of the people have passed away and you know, compared to 25 years ago, I remember Johnny Villani would love to play that accordion all the way up to the heights, you know? And he probably had a few sodas along the way, too, so it even made it better when he played. <laughs> but God bless him, and God bless uh, everybody else. Okay, so we need uh, three motions. Uh, all alcoholic, Brian? Motion. motion. Second. Seconded. Uh, all in favor, opposed, unanimous. The next one is for the uh, live entertainment. I'll Brian, move. Motion Second. by Brian, seconded by Bill. All in favor, opposed, and the next one is for the parade on uh, July 20th. So moved. <coughs> second. Ryan, second by Bill. Um, good evening. So listen, good luck. Thank you. Thank and you. I appreciate all the cooperation. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good luck. Thank you. Good luck. Good luck. Good job, Chief. Okay. Attorney La Sosa. Rob. How are you, Joe? Good, very good. How are you? Good, nice to see you. Okay. All right, this is for an application alteration of premises. Uh, let me read the public notice. Board of Selectmen hereby gives notice that has received an application from Powerless Incorporated doing business as a tradesman, 284 West Street, to amend its current restaurant alcoholic license. The proposed amendment seeks to alter the premises to include an outside deck 31 feet long 22 inches wide attached to the building with handicapped legal entrance ramp in addition to a 12 by 31 open roof covering of the building side 10 by 31 feet air open towards parking lot ramp side the access from entrance ramp and door to existing building uh, with non-functional bar cornered at existing building outside walls primarily used for sitting and lounging, it will be used to, on certain occasions, stocking all bar items temporarily as needed. The bar will contain no more than five seats on either side, three lighted ceilings fans installed in the roofed half, non-roof half lit by parking lot uh, floodlight. Pursuant to Mass General uh, 138, as amended, or a select will conduct a public hearing in this room at this time. We have some uh, designs, the handicap ramp entrance. Uh, we have something to scale. Shows the existing building, existing roof. As far as the sign-off sheet, uh, occupant load is 95, undergoing renovation to become accessible and to correct site plan deficiencies. Uh, there's a stipulations for the planning board, no outstanding taxes. Uh, fire chief, fire department has no objection at this time. The police chief has reviewed the plans and he feels uh, no, no questions. The planning board, uh, 418 2013, this is from uh, planning board chairman. Amended site plan approved subject to the following conditions 
that the 55 uh, foot long curb medium that separates the driveways be reconstructed and extended 20 feet to the north and also subject to one through five commission on disability letter that's from Mike Nicholson the chairman basically talking about the handicap by ADA requirements that are necessary so with that I'd like to turn it over to uh, attorney La Sosa and Joe welcome to the meeting thank you uh, mr. chairman and members of the board uh, as you said uh, Joe La Sosa representing powerless Inc uh, doing business as and better known as the tradesman uh, with me is Rob De Dominic, who is the owner of the establishment. Uh, what we have before you is an alteration of the existing license to allow uh, the extension of the uh, premises and obviously to allow the consumption of alcoholic be beverages on the extension. Uh, just by way of background, <clears throat> uh, the premises always had a what I would call an unenclosed porch in to the rear of the building was approximately 12 feet by 12 feet. Uh, Mr. De Dominic has taken that down and constructed a uh, partially covered deck. Uh, the first 12 feet will be uh, roofed, the others will be open air. Uh, it's approximately 31 feet widthwise across the building, uh, 20 feet directly to the rear of the building. Um, the uh, there's a description <clears throat> attached to the application that we've submitted which tells you something about it, but, you know, as they say, a picture is worth a thousand words, and we've got some photos of it because the project is approximately 80% completed at this time. Uh, I can, they're not all the same, yeah. but you can get an idea of what it looks like right now. As you can see, <clears throat> there is uh, built-in benches on uh, two sides of the deck. One uh, toward the rear and on one of the sides are built-in benches. Whether or not there's going to be tables out there in addition to the benches, we're not sure. We're going to uh, see how it goes in terms of uh, flow and uh, congestion. Uh, I can tell you that the um, <clears throat> all the conditions according to the letter from the Handicap Commission and the uh, Planning Board have been complied with in my conversation with the uh, our, uh, with Gary on handling this afternoon. Um, now that's on the site plan itself not on the ground because there's still items that need to be completed on the ground. Uh, for example I know there's going to be a metal railing uh, at the end of the handicap ramp going all the way down to the parking lot level. That's going to be done this week, as I understand it. We have to designate the uh, parking spaces and those types of things. But otherwise, it's, it's pretty much as you see it here. Um, I know in, th in these types of situations where there's an outdoor a portion of the premises proposed, there's always concern with noise. But uh, quite frankly, in this case, uh, there's a swamp on two sides of the building. There's a business across the street. There's a business next door. So uh, it's, it's, in terms of an outdoor facility, it's probably the best location in town, quite frankly. And uh, any other concerns or questions the board would have, I'd be try to answer them right now. Joe, the only thing I'd recommend is uh, Mike Nicholson, before everything is all done, you should probably call him to make, have mm -hmm. him look at it, make sure everything is okay. Sure. Because you don't want a situation where you've done it, then you have to call in. And then he makes you know say, well, you have to do this. So that's what I, the only suggestion. I did that I once. Okay. Yeah. No. That's that's that's. Okay. Yeah. Absolutely. Okay. Brian. Yeah. No. Uh, no. It looks great. Um, quick question. Yeah. Because the uh, planning board is indicating the permits coming from Sunday Football LLC. Is that the owner of the real estate? Yes. Okay. Yes. And Which he, Mr. Dinamic happens to be the managing partner of the LLC also. So he's essentially renting to himself, yeah. That's okay, I didn't know, because the, obviously the um, uh, license application is the powerless ink. Right. That's the serving entity. That's correct. That's the business. Yeah, no, it looks great, good luck. Thank you. Yeah. No, the pictures, uh, the pictures look, the work is incredible. So, uh, you know, I would say uh, the improvements you're making make sense. It looks ideally suited, as you said, uh, for 
uh, that you're not looking for out, outdoor entertainment at this point, right? There's nothing that's part of this application for meaning. No, uh, he, live he band mean putting a live band outside, outside, which is not part of this application at right. this time. Oh no. Okay. So <sighs> so it's essentially serving. There are lots of examples of that where they're serving, eating outside. Exactly. Frankly, it's what you see all over Europe, and I like it. So <laughs> like the concept and the work. The work does look of high quality. So. Uh, it's a, it looks like a great addition. It makes sense. Okay. okay. Motion? I'll move. Motion by Bill. I'll second to approve. Second by Bill. Any discussion? All in favor? Opposed? Good luck. Unanimous. Thank you. Good Thank luck. you. Thank you. Okay, Attorney LaSosa. Nice is seeing you. This, is this your spot right here? Yes, it is. <laughs> <laughs> walking up town. Okay, well, <laughs> it's all right. Well, Joe, Mr. Solazzi would have given you 30 seconds. <laughs> okay. On a good day. Thank you. Yeah. Good Thank luck. You. Thanks, guys. Good luck. Thanks. See okay. you later. So long, guys. That concludes the uh, schedule appointments. At this time, we'll go to town administrator's report. Rick? Yes, thank you, Mr. Chairman. A um, number of things tonight. Um, first of all, budgets uh, under the jurisdiction of the Board of Selectmen are on target. Uh, again, an update on the windows. We are progressing uh, very nicely with those. All 19 of the windows on the second floor of the town hall have been restored and reinstalled, except for the large Palladian window on the north face of the building. The two Oculus windows, the rectangular windows, and the smaller Palladian window in the attic level have also be, been restored and reinstalled. Uh, the contractor has now moved to the uh, windows on the first floor. The windows to date in the tax collector's office has, have been uh, restored and reinstalled. Uh, the windows in the selectman's office have now been removed, will be reinstalled on Thursday. Uh, they will be removing windows from the uh, treasurer's office uh, also uh, this week. Uh, fiscal uh, year 2015 local aid estimates based on the Senate final budget, uh, the estimates for Chapter 70 aid, and the estimate for unrestricted general government aid are the same as those figures as passed in the House. Um, Chapter 78 is $20,022,624. Got general government aid is $2,717,877. Um, we did uh, have uh, uh, individuals from the Worcester County Sheriff's Office. Uh, the Sheriff Louis G. Evangelitis uh, sent four individuals in the community service program to work in Milford this past week, May 27th, 28th, 29th, and 30th. They spread mulch at the town hall and the senior center. They also cleared weeds and then spread additional mulch at the police station. And I was also told that, uh, quite lately that they also painted some uh, benches uh, at the senior center. Um, I did meet with the sheriff and we discussed uh, possible additional future projects. One would be to uh, clean the town owned uh, parking lots. I want to uh, thank uh, Sheriff Evangelitis and his workers for their assistance to the town. I would also like to announce that we've scheduled a reception for the new fire chief at Town Hall on Friday, June 6th from 9.30 a.m. to 11.30 a.m. We invite everyone to come to Town Hall to officially welcome the chief. Um, we also will be thanking retired Chief John Tuohy for his many years of dedicated service to the town and we'll have coffee and pastries uh, at that uh, event. Um, I just would like to remind the public that should anyone uh, be unable to attend a meeting, selectman meeting, and have questions for the board, they are free to contact me, uh, come to my office, send me an email, give me a telephone call, and then I can follow up uh, with the board accordingly. Um, three items that are in your informational correspondence packet tonight, the first being another double poll report. Uh, There's another report from National Grid indicating that seven polls have been removed from April 11th to May 15th, basically from April 2013 to date, 100 polls have been removed. There are 66 remaining. I do want to thank Bob Russell from National Grid for his continued effort working uh, on this matter. Another item in your informational correspondence that I want to bring to your attention is the Route 16 roadway improvements. Uh, as you know, Highway Surveyor Scott Crisofuli and former town engineer Mike Santora met with Mass DOT officials last year seeking funding for this project. Uh, it includes improvements to the Route 140 intersection near Milford Hospital. We are seeking $2.8 million from the Federal Transportation Program. It would include turning lanes, painting new lines, installing new sidewalks, and handicap ramps. According to Scott, this is a difficult intersection and definitely needs to be done. Uh, we hope the project to be awarded in uh, 2017. One final item, again, that's in your informational uh, correspondence. 
uh, is the Mass Bay Commuter Railroad Vegetation Control Program. Uh, there's a letter from TEC Associates advising us that the right-of-way services for the railroad will be performed by Keolis Commuter Services, Inc. The right-of-way runs from Cedar Street South to the Hopedale Town Line just before Howard Street. I'm told this is to ensure that the railway remains safe, running smoothly, includes removing debris, clearing drainage trenches, trimming trees, and clear, clearing gravel. Uh, I've spoken with town engineer Vaughn Reese. She will review the yearly operational plan with the Conservation Commission, and if need be, uh, will request uh, changes to the plan and revisions. And that's all I have tonight. Yeah, Rick, thank you. Uh, Mr. Cavanaugh had come in and recommended several items, and one of them was that if a resident couldn't come to a meeting, that's why I asked the administrator to address that. Um, Certainly, if a resident can't come to a meeting, they can call Attorney Bellani during the day, and uh, we'll certainly try to uh, get the information back to you. Rick, on the uh, on the poll locations, did we did we check on poll 84 on Congress Street across from Robert Road? Yes, I'm told that that will be taken care of. If okay, it has not already been. Okay, thank yes. you. Yes, and the other item is uh, I was at a, a Commission on Disability meeting a couple of weeks ago, and they talked about some of the. Um, improvements on Main Street, especially in the air, handicap area. The plates that they put in with the uh, handicap uh, entrance are located. I've already worn out. I guess there's two types that you can use. I think the state used the cheaper one, so all those things have to be replaced already, and I don't think that's probably even a year and a half old. So it'd be, um, I think it would behoove us to maybe uh, let Varney know about that and also maybe have a discussion because there were some other things where um, as far as handicap issues, as far as the chirping, some of the the way the noises are aligned, it's, it's not it's not proper and then I think at some point we're going to probably have to go back and spend some money to fix it. So if they're planning on Route 16, let's try to, you know, tie them down and try to do things right or make them aware of some of the things that uh, we're already encountering so that it doesn't get repeated. Sure. Um, any questions for Rick, Brian? Uh, <clears throat> just, just one item, and I, I didn't want to bring it up when the individual was here from National Grid because you know I've done that before and it's not not terribly beneficial. But you know I, I, I've been tracking these reports that we've been getting, and I'm just trying to get my arms around the numbers, and I, I just want to make sure that we have clarity in terms of how this is happening. Because the report that we had on April 8th of 2014 indicated polls remaining at that time through March were 55. Now we get the report of May 21st, 2014, and it indicates the polls at the start were 60. So, you know, I'm not finding a tremendous amount of continuity as I track these these monthly reports. And, um, you know, I just want to. I just want to make sure we're just not, you know, throwing numbers on paper and, sure. and just and just you know pacifying everybody. So, you know, just kind of a warning at this point. To, you know, let's take a, a closer look at this. Maybe get some clarification from him. Um, you know, to see how these these reports line up from month to month. Sure. Bill, any questions for administrator? Um, no, just uh, well. Just a, a couple of points, um, no questions. Yeah, um, you know, it's, um, you know, the, the window, first of all, the window project looks great. For the windows that are done, uh, it looks to be a tremendous improvement. I know they've needed that work for a long time. Uh, I'm looking forward to uh, seeing it all complete. Um, and maybe at the next meeting we could get a status on uh, the project and uh, expected timeline for completion. Sure. Um, the other thing is, uh, I noticed in the in the minutes we reflected the auditor's report. I just wanted to be clear. I didn't want to make it a point for the minutes, but I did want to say uh, that I would have expected a corrective action plan uh, to have been provided by now. Okay. Um, so there were some uh, minor issues identified and. Uh, to me, it's not, I, I expect with a business and a community and a budget of this size that things will be identified as opportunities for improvement, um, but I'd also like to see what the corrective action is. Um, sure. And, and while we're talking about roads and the Route 16 plan and some of the Dino's concerns, you know, I had one, it's lingering from the last uh, 
effort that was done and that's specifically the sign that points to 495 um, at the intersection of, or near the intersection of Maine and uh, Maine and Cedar that sign is very very large indicating where 495 is and frankly it, it shields a, a business's view uh, its location looks like it uh, we could have found a better place for it and maybe some uh, movement upward but uh, maybe if we could talk with some of the businesses up there see if there's a better location talk with town engineer um, um, talk with Olivas as an example because I know they're one of the, the businesses obscured by that sign um, and maybe there's just a better place that we can also suit the merchants I've received calls on it and uh, you know it's as it happens Brian and I were looking at it on the way down during the parade and it is uh, it is quite large so uh, maybe there's something we can do to improve that sure okay <clears throat> we'll go to old business and town administrator on the IT recommendation uh, yes uh, thank you um, as you are aware the board voted on May 12th of this year to appoint Mr. Alan Graham to the position of IT director. Unfortunately, he informed me on Tuesday, May 27th, that he's accepted another employment opportunity. Um, he sent uh, an email to me indicating that primarily, I believe, it was uh, salary driven uh, and that he would not be able to uh, accept uh, our opportunity to work here in the town of Milford. As a result of that occurring, on May 28th, I met with Bob Tremblay, school superintendent, Chris Morin, and Carlos Lazard, members of our technology task force committee. Uh, they also had and interviewed the four finalists with me. The primary focus was twofold. One, do we consider another candidate from the interview list? And two, if not, do we repost the position? Uh, we reviewed the four finalists. When we met originally, we had narrowed the field to two candidates we felt were both qualified for the position. In fact, we discussed the second candidate, Paul Bolivis, and determined that he would also be a strong candidate. Uh, we were impressed with his technology skills, his background, his communication skills, his public uh, experience, speaking experience, excuse me. We did, uh, in fact, wait a day before we made our recommendation then uh, because these two candidates were close. Um, Mr. Bolivis has a senior IT, was a sen senior IT manager at IBM and two other companies since 2003. He's managed hundreds of IT projects, has extensive experience in preparing budgets, creating project plans. Um, he has also worked for Halston High School upgrading their network and antivirus programs. He has several uh, IT uh, certifications. What was most impressive, I think, during his interviews, um, or his interview with us was his ability to effectively and simply explain his viewpoints to us and it was apparent, at least to me and other members, he would be able to articulate those needs to both our department and to the town's various boards um, and committees. Um, therefore, um, the committee again discussed which path we should take, and we determined, and I recommend, uh, that you appoint Mr. Paul Blivis uh, the, to the Director of Technology position. Uh, should you approve this recommendation, I would also request that he be placed at grade six, step five, uh, with a starting salary of $89,652. I would also request that he be allowed to begin working uh, Monday, June 9th, 2014. Uh, again, not a situation we envisioned. However, uh, we do feel, uh, members of the committee and myself, again, that he is highly qualified. And again, it was extremely close between him and the prior candidate. Uh, and we feel, feel comfortable uh, making this recommendation um, to you this evening. All right. Any comments, questions? Yeah, no, I, um, just a situation, but, you know, I want to commend you and the committee um, in terms of how you dealt with it quickly um, and efficiently. So uh, I'm very comfortable with the recommendation. Chris, I want to thank you for your service on the committee also. Bill? I'm also comfortable with the recommendation. Uh, I, I want to echo the concern I had before regarding the salary. Um, I, I still think it will be an inhibitor. Uh, I hope that it's uh, it's not, uh, but I do have a question. I should have asked it before. Um, Rick, do you recall in our benchmarking for salaries, 
Um, did we benchmark bo both town and school? So in other words, uh, somebody who had complete responsibility over town and school, or did we benchmark town, or did we benchmark uh, school? We, we believe, I believe we benchmarked someone who had complete responsibility of both the town and the school. Yeah. And this may be an issue we are going to need to revisit down the road. Okay. Um, no, I, again, I, I want to thank the committee. I, I think you've come up with qualified candidates. Uh, I've echoed this concern a few times. Um, I want to I want to say it again. I know that the committee is also concerned about that. Um, our ability to attract and retain people means that we have to be competitive with our salaries, and uh, that remains a concern of mine. I, I don't want to make this a revolving door position, and I know the committee that worked this hard would like to have somebody who comes here, stays, and with this candidate backing out because they got a better offer. Uh, I'm not surprised they got a better offer because uh, uh, people that take on this, this type of responsibility are getting paid more in a lot of settings, different settings. Um, so uh, while I'm not freewheeling on the spending, uh, I'm cautious in that area. Um, the cost is much greater and you know the pain, the committee knows the pain associated with um, turn it, turnover. Um, so, okay, but I will take your recommendation and I'd be happy to make a motion okay. to, to approve that recommendation. Motion by Bill, second by second Brian, it. that we Thank appoint uh, Mr. Blevis and the starting salary will be uh, grade six, step five at $89,652 and he'll begin working for the town uh, next Monday. Any further discussion? If not, all in favor? Oppose? Unanimous. I just have one item. Uh, oh, no, let's go to uh, Brian first for old business, Brian. No, no, I don't uh, have anything. Bill, old business? No, we've actually already discussed it. Thank you. Okay. I spoke with uh, Superintendent Trumbly a couple of times regarding the committee to study the potential uses of the middle school east. As a matter of fact, we spoke again today um, I told him my thoughts so the committee is ready to be formed and ready to bring recommendations to this to the board uh, and hope I'll be bringing a recommendation for our committee at the next meeting uh, we had a good discussion he uh, I told him about the importance uh, make sure that we have school and, and town uh, government side uh, he wants to bring he wants to ask the school committee some questions on Thursday and then he'll get back to me but I, I think there's an agreement that uh, We'll probably go forward. Once again, we talked about the primary objective will be to review and analyze potential uses for Middle School East. It could be uh, continued use as an educational facility, uh, possible sale, rental, or lease, mixed use of the building, office complex, uh, use of the building by the town for office space, and, uh, and also I think uh, um, that the committee will certainly delve into impacts on traffic, parking, revitalization of Main Street, zoning issues, tax ramifications. I think that's, uh, you know, in this type of thing, I think everybody has an idea, everybody has an opinion, and a lot of those things we really won't know if it's feasible until we get into it. So, um, you know, we do have some time, but I feel that we should begin the process and, um, and then come up with some recommendations, alternatives, that the committee will provide to us, and uh, he'll get back to me, and then we'll uh, we'll meet again, and then we'll have I'll have a committee for the board uh, to accept uh, on the 16th. Okay. Uh, yeah, Mr. Chairman, if I may, um, no, I, I think that's fine. I'm glad that you had conversation with Superintendent Trombley. I I really think it's um, you know incumbent upon the school committee to um, take a good long hard look at this particular building certainly there's there's plenty of time as as i understand it the schedule for woodland is september 2016 um at at, at best and we know construction projects always can go later so so there's plenty of time um to really uh consider you know what that building means to the school department i think one of the things that it has really kind of materialized over the last few weeks or months is the recognition that that gym at uh, Middle School East is a key component to their existing program. 
uh, beyond the fact that the school department has looked to expand uh, middle school athletics, but I mean they use it right now on a regular basis. So, um, you know what 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 happens oftentimes uh, when issues get put forth with with other committees, um, that they lose control. And um, I think the school committee needs to understand that that right now they control their own their own destiny. Um, I, I'm sure there's a number of alternatives that they might want to look to that building, whether it's administrative, whether it's uh, an alternative uh, high school, whether it's uh, bringing in tuition programs. And I uh, commend you for giving the, the school department the opportunity to take a good hard look at that and um, make sure that they exhaust uh, all of their uh, possible uses before something might happen that I think would, would, would preclude the use for the school department uh, once it gets into a third party's hand. So um, I think it's a great idea and um, I would hope that the school committee would take advantage of that to really comprehensively study um, the particular building, their, their own needs, and um, you know maybe you, you know maybe they need some you know, a few months you know it might go six months it might go nine months sure. but but that's okay I mean yeah, no problem you know no one's yeah. looking to move into you know the new Woodland School tomorrow so sure I mean I think all of this is good in terms of looking at the, the the whole scheme of things but it really does have to start with the school committee that the building is not surplus it's being used and it will be used for the next couple of years so. Um, you know, I, I think it's good to give them the opportunity to really have a chance to fully examine it for their needs. Thank you. Bill. Yeah, I think along those lines, I think one of the challenges is they've, they, in their documents to uh, the state, they've identified it as being surplus. And I think part of the challenge would be, um, and I'm not, I'm not disagreeing, I'm, I'm only saying that uh, in order to maintain that building plus the new woodland, uh, there'd be some significant impact to budget. So I think understanding some of that it would would have to be part of that discussion going getting back to the state if if it's not surplus uh, recommunicating a, a new plan uh, new ed plan uh, is something that they would need to do I think uh, uh, and certainly working with the fincom on any future use uh, if they were going to maintain that building and the new woodland school is going to I think be part of their challenge but that aside um, I, I agree it's not time sensitive and um, uh, you know, the only feedback I'll probably have as it relates to uh, committees that get formed um, when and if they get formed is that uh, they have some component of citizen participation beyond the, the typical suspects, if you will. Um, you know, and I, we haven't talked about this at any great length, but, you know, obviously there'd be, you know, some planning component or some, uh, yeah, some engineering component. There'd be probably IDC who's talked about Main Street. But just citizens at large, if there's any citizens, a way maybe for them to become involved where Main Street is so vital and that uh, that building is so key that, you know, maybe there's a way to add additional uh, a couple of people that uh, could represent just citizenry at large. Yeah, no, we had some good discussions. Like I said, uh, a lot of the things that we talked about incorporates uh, both of your comments. We, uh, I said, hey, let's, let's, let's get started. Let's have the school committee. Uh, Way in, and I think it's a sense where I think he feels that he would like us like us to participate and form a committee, and the uh, school department will certainly have a major focus on the uh, on the committee. I also said that hey, this is something where uh, maybe after six eight months, uh, you might need some monies for some uh, an engineer or an architect, and uh, we can certainly do that. But we have plenty of time, and hopefully after a year or so, we could have some maybe some concrete ideas on what should happen to that building. We've been talking about this for a long time, the potential of that building not being used. And, you know, it's in the center of town. It's a main tower affair, and we just have to make sure that, uh, you know, the right thing is done uh, for schools or town use and all that. So um, that's just a little bit of an update for you. Okay, thanks. A new business, we have a donation to uh, Benjamin Moore. I'll move. Uh, Second. To the fire department, motion by Brian. Second by Bill. All in favor, opposed, unanimous. Another donation by Benjamin Moore to the police department, motion by Brian. 
uh, yeah, I just but, I just wanted to take a second to. I, I almost think we do this sometimes perfunctory. I'm guilty of it, and I'm not uh, they do challenging. It here, I think, right? Yeah, yeah. It, it, this is uh, you know. So this is five for the benefit of the community. This is five thousand uh, dollars, one given to the police, one given to the fire, uh, for to be used for the betterment at their discretion. Uh, it's a tremendous uh, gift and uh, very considerate of the business beyond the taxes they pay. I just wanted to make an uh, additional point on that. And Rick, we can send uh, Scott a, a letter Absolutely. of appreciation also. Absolutely. Okay. Uh, the P Cafe Sorrento, an application for a one day license for the Mar Marine Building Fund. Motion by Brian. Second. Second by Bill. All in favor? Opposed? Unanimous. Next is a uh, traffic recommendation, Pine Island Road. This is from Barney Reese, the town engineer. I agree that the road is too narrow and uh, to safely allow for parking either side. I, re I recommend three to four signs per side to be installed along the stretch of Pine Island Road north of Tina Drive. Is there a motion? I'll move. Motion by Brian. You know, um, I, I'll second for discussion. It, n normally we would have, you know, correspondence, a memo, uh, Police Chief, it's a public safety concern. I know you had indicated in your uh, town administrator summary, but uh, I just didn't see it here. Um, in the future, it would be good to have when the when the police sure. and fire yep. um, have have uh, voiced a, a comment. There were some uh, some emails that I probably should have included. Okay, that all right, no problem, no that's, problem. Yeah, but they did um, because it's one of the things. If I didn't catch that note in your summary yeah i'd have been looking for it here sure um so i'll i'll second be happy to second and uh okay with that we also have a, a donation uh from harold and marsha Rhodes again uh, accept a donation motion by uh, i'll move second by brian second by bill that's unanimous uh, rick want to talk about the uh jackie pratt's replacement uh yes uh, as you know, uh, Jackie retired from her position as clerk for the planning and engineering office. Uh, she, her last day actually in the office was May 25th. Uh, her accrued vacation time, et cetera, will extend to June 6th. Uh, the position was posted internally the week of May 5th with an applicant deadline of May 15th. One resume was received. An interview was conducted on May 19th. Uh, it is felt that the applicant does meet the uh, requirements for the position and does bring over 30 years of experience working in a professional office environment. Um, the recommendation from uh, town engineer Vonnie Reese is the appointment of Maria Marias for the position of clerk for the planning and engineering office. Her rate will be uh, $20.21 per hour. Her hours will be 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. Uh, and her expected start date would be uh, June 3rd. Um, for benefit calculations. I'm sorry, for benefit calculations, June 3rd. Her start date in that office would be June 9th. Need a motion, Rick? Need a motion? I guess I believe I do. Right. I'll, I'll move. Motion, motion by Brian. I'm happy to second. Maria's second well qualified. Bill. Thank you. Yes, she'll do well. Um, okay. I just have a couple of items from new business. Rick, can you ask Barney Reese on Route 109? Yeah. Uh, there are presently no speed signs. Yep. And, um, I think we all know it's heavily traveled, and I think once people leave McDonald's going towards town, you know, there's good speeding, and um, and then you come across right before the uh, bike trail crossing. So I, I know we have to provide data and all that stuff, but if we can start the process, I know it's a state road on, uh, you know, how we could maybe place in the future some speed limit signs for 109, if you can start that process. Also, some of the residents have called me uh, regarding that process if you could do that sure and the other item is um you know i think we all try to maximize um, the ultimate service to the uh, public i think when all our offices in this building do a nice job uh, helping out the residents and doing whatever answering questions so i think we maximize that to the fullest but i think we should also maximize it similarly on the safety side uh, as we all know, things have changed compared to 25, 30 years ago. Um, upstairs, you know, it's rather open. Um, I know some some of the workers uh, feel that there's some things that should be done to tighten up security. You know, what I'd like to ask Rick is to, uh, you know, to talk to all the officers upstairs, uh, ascertain 
you know, what they feel, if anything should be done, uh, to make some improvements, to make them feel a little bit more safe in doing business. A lot of times you only have one lady uh, probably working till five o'clock. And like I said, it is rather open. So in, in most cases, most offices now, uh, there's been a lot done as far as security, safety, making sure that people, when they're servicing the public, are servicing whoever, that there's also a security factor there so that, um, and like I said, a lot of things have happened over the years and it's a lot different from what it used to be. So I think it's something that we have to make sure that uh, you know our employees are safe Hopefully, Rick, you can come back, and I think you will come back with some recommendations uh, and thoughts that these employees will be telling you, and now we can go from there. Okay, sure. Okay. Um, on correspondence, we have an alcohol compliance check, and this is a good one. Uh, a compliance check was done by the police department, uh, Detective Canero and Detective Souza, and the following uh, establishments were, 15 establishments were, uh, found to be in compliance. Um, Arcos Market, Cedar Street Market, Countryside Liquor, Hickey Liquors, JP Liquors, Liquor World, Max Package Store, Main Street Market, Milford Package Store, Mobile Route 85, Mobile Route 109, Peters Market, Purchase Street Market, Quick Mart, and West Street Liquor. So the police department will be notifying them that uh, you know they were in compliance, nothing uh, happened that was bad. And I think we should also send them a letter of uh, good work on their part. Sure. Anything else? Any other correspondence? All set, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Okay. Uh, Bill, anything? No, thank you, Mr. Chairman. We have, uh, that's the open part of the meeting. We do have two items, real estate negotiations with town council for two pieces of property. And I'll ask for a I'll motion, move. motion by Brian. Second. I'll second. Bill, any further discussion? Roll call. All, Aye. all in favor? Aye. Opposed? and we will not be coming back into open session. Good night.